What's up everyone? Welcome to eCPU. In this video, we are going to take a look at installing M.2 NVMe solid state drives using an adapter like this one. We're going to see if it's a viable option for anybody that might need to install some additional M.2 drives into their system, or maybe someone that has a motherboard that just doesn't have any M.2 slots to begin with. And then at the end of the video, we're going to take a look at the speeds that we can get while using the drives through the adapter to see if there's any compromises associated with installing it that way. So make sure you stick around to the end because I think the answer just might surprise you. Let's do this. The adapter that I'm going to be using today is the Rivo Dual M.2 NVMe and SATA 3 PCI Express 3.0 adapter. As the name suggests, there's a slot for a SATA SSD and also a PCI Express or NVMe SSD as well. Now Rivo does make a version of this adapter that's a little bit smaller that just has one slot for an NVMe SSD, which is great if that's all you plan to use. For this dual slot, dual interface adapter, if you plan to install just an NVMe SSD, it's basically plug and play, where you can install the drive into the adapter and then drop the adapter into an open PCI Express slot on your motherboard, and you can pretty much get up and running pretty easily and quickly. But if you want to install a SATA 3 drive into here, just be aware that you need to install a SATA cable from the adapter and connect it to a port on your motherboard. And that's because SATA drives cannot communicate over the PCI Express interface. Face. So you have to have that cable connection for the SATA drive, but not for the NVMe drive. So if you install a SATA drive and you don't hook up the cable, it's not going to work. Once you have your drive set up on the adapter, you can install it by simply inserting it into an open PCI Express slot on your motherboard and connect the SATA power cable if you're using a SATA drive, and that's actually it for the hardware side of things. Now we can power on the system and start configuring our new drives. Before we continue, let me jump in here really quick and ask you to hit that subscribe button so that you can become part of this growing community and also turn on notifications so that you'll receive a notice when new videos are uploaded and that way you won't miss any new content. Now let's get back to the video. Once you've powered on your system and you've reached the Windows desktop, the first thing you need to do is launch disk management. Go over to the start menu, type in disk management and launch the application. If you installed your drive and adapter properly, Disk Manager should recognize the new disk right away and prompt you to initialize it. There are two initialization options available, Master Boot Record and GUID Partition Table. If you plan to use the drive to boot an operating system, you should choose MBR, otherwise GPT will be just fine. Click OK and Windows Disk Management will initialize your new drive. You can then scroll down and you should be able to find your new drive being displayed as unallocated space. Here we want to right click on it and select new simple volume. This should launch the Windows Simple Volume Wizard. Click next and then confirm the size of the new volume. By default, it's set to the whole drive, so I'm just going to click next. Here you can assign the drive letter. I'm going to use the letter X and then click next. You're going to want to format the new partition using NTFS Quick Format. And if you want, you can give your new drive a name. By default, it's just called New Volume. Click Next and then click Finish. Windows will now recognize your new drive and you should be able to start using it right away. The drive that I chose to install is the Samsung 970 EVO 1TB NVMe SSD. To test the performance of the adapted drive, I'm going to do a couple of different file copy tests and also run a benchmark so that we can measure the sequential read and write speeds. For the file copy test, I'm going to grab a video file from one of my regular SATA SSDs. You can see here that it's about 2.5 gigabytes in size. I'm going to copy it and then paste it onto the new adapted drive. So that file copy looks like it averaged about 470 megabytes per second. And I think that makes sense because that's the read speed of the SATA drive that I copied the data from. So in this case, we're being limited by the read speed of the slower SATA drive, even though our NVMe drive is capable of writing data much faster. 
Now I'm gonna select the same file on the new adapted NVMe drive. I'm gonna copy it and then paste it onto the same drive so the adapted NVMe drive will now have to read the data and write it at the same time. And there it is. It's so fast that the status bar doesn't even have time to show up. Here it is again. So we're able to see that we're able to read and write a 2.5 gigabyte file in about a second, which is insanely fast. But are we getting the advertised read and write speeds even though we're using an adapter? To test this, I'm gonna use a benchmark utility called Crystal Disk Mark. I'm gonna run the utility on the new adapted SSD and see what kind of results we get. The results for the sequential read and write speeds are 3512 and 2502 megabytes per second. How does that compare with the advertised speeds for this drive? Let's see. Samsung's website shows that our one terabyte 970 Evo has a max read speed of 3500 megabytes per second and a max write speed of 2500 megabytes per second. And we actually measured a little bit more than that, believe it or not. So adapting this SSD has not impacted its performance in any way. Now, for those of you that want to use this for an operating system, provided you set up the partition as a master boot record in the beginning, you can now just install Windows like you normally would. I tested this by creating a Windows 10 installation media using a USB flash drive. I was able to boot from the installation media, select the adapted drive, and successfully install the operating system. Just a word of caution though, I have heard that some people are having trouble using adapted drives as operating system boot drives under certain hardware configurations and certain circumstances. What I can tell you is that it worked flawlessly for me on my ASUS Z390 ROG Strix motherboard and Intel Core i9-9900K system. Now your mileage may vary depending on your own hardware configuration. Adapted SSDs. We've been able to prove that adapting doesn't necessarily have to mean compromise. From the super easy installation to the insanely fast performance. Adapting the Samsung 970 EVO using this Rivo dual NVMe and SATA adapter is a solid choice for system builders. Purchasing links for all of the hardware that I used in this video will be down in the description. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and we'll see you in the next video. See ya.